Tonight, several breaking stories, the storm systems, holiday travel and the rescues. Families trapped in their homes amid rising waters in the Northeast. In New York City tonight, the massive five alarm fire. And in Philadelphia, the tragic crash, a news helicopter going down. First tonight, the states of emergency in the Northeast. Rescuers pulling families from flooded homes. No power and the water still rising. As the West now gets slammed tonight, just as millions travel for the holiday. Ginger Z times this out. And tonight here, the Christmas forecast as well. Will there be a white Christmas anywhere? Also tonight, the high stakes prisoner swap between the U.S. and Venezuela. Ten Americans freed, including six people wrongfully detained. And one person released tonight the U.S. was after Mary Bruce at the White House. The horrific images just in tonight, the newly released police video showing officers responding to the deadly shooting at UNLV. The professor who was turned down for a job opening fire. And now the images tonight of what authorities and those students were up against. 24 hours after Colorado's Supreme Court determined Donald Trump should not be on the ballot in Colorado. What Donald Trump is now doing, President Biden weighing in tonight and the Republicans who want to beat Trump for the nomination reacting to Rachel Scott reporting. The Israel-Hamas war tonight, the airstrike, and the civilians and journalists witnessing the strike. Oh my God. The Hamas-run health ministry now reporting more than 20,000 people have been killed in Gaza. Rick Clinton in Israel. Here in the U.S. tonight in Philadelphia, that deadly crash of a news helicopter involving our ABC station WPVI. Tonight, we remember the veteran pilot and photographer, the crash under investigation. In New York City, the five alarm fire, multiple injuries being reported, hundreds now forced from their homes just days before Christmas. The cruise ship vacationed the Bahamas, so why did the ship go to Boston and then Canada instead? At our great Made in America Christmas tonight, we've taken you to every corner of the country. Tonight here, Katy, Texas. Gotta keep the beer cold. The iconic American made igloo coolers. And what else we found? From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a very busy Wednesday night. The prisoner swap with Venezuela, 10 Americans freed. In New York City tonight, the five alarm fire. But we do begin tonight with the storm systems, the rescues, and what's now coming next with five days now to Christmas and, of course, millions now traveling. The West getting slammed tonight, and here in the Northeast, the water's still rising and the rescues. The states of emergency at this hour from New Jersey to Maine and Patterson, New Jersey. A flooded road turned to black ice, a 13-car pileup, including cars and trucks. The Passaic River cresting at its highest level in 12 years, flooding this neighborhood. This is Little Falls, New Jersey, you're looking at here. Families rescued from their flooded homes, many without power now in the freezing cold. In southern Maine tonight, the Androscoggin River very high this evening. Officials now telling families in low-lying areas to evacuate. More than 100,000 still without power. Meanwhile, in the west tonight, blinding rain slamming California. The image is just north of L.A. tonight. The storm's a serious threat now for the next 48 hours. Torrential rains, wind gusts up to 60 miles an hour. Ginger Z standing by to time all of this out and the Christmas forecast for the country. But first, Trevor Alp on the families being rescued and the accidents in the Northeast tonight. Tonight, neighborhoods underwater that's still rising days after storms moved out. This is a scene that we have seen over and over again of people getting rescued from their homes. Multiple rivers in New Jersey still in major flood stage. Boats and high water vehicles in hard hit Little Falls ferrying freezing families and pets to safety, including nine year old Alicia Eusidio. When you saw them come up in the boat, what were you thinking? That finally I can leave this cold place. Ana Jimenez waited two days for the water to recede. We had to leave because our heat went out. So, you know, with the kids and I'm expecting we couldn't do it anymore. It's extremely dangerous. You know, you could have the gas start going into the homes. You could have an explosion. You could have wire shortages. Oh, there is a person in that vehicle. Overnight first responders pulling a driver from this stalled vehicle in Patterson. Icy conditions nearby causing this pileup of more than a dozen vehicles. And up in Maine, new evacuations. First responders using airboats to save eight people trapped in the town of Casco. Bridges left damaged, roads washed away, and Governor Janet Mills warning power won't be fully restored for several more days.
And David, here in New Jersey, you can see the water all the way up to some residents' doorsteps. They've now canceled school here for the rest of the week because of this flooding, and the river in town isn't going to drop below flood stage until next week. David. Trevor Rolt leading us off tonight. Trevor, thank you. So, of course, Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z is standing by, tracking it all. Some of these rivers still in major flood stage. Of course, this dangerous system now in the West, and everyone asking, will it be a white Christmas anywhere? So, Ginger, we know you have it all covered tonight. Yes, David, let's start with that Passaic River, which in New Jersey will stay at major flood stage, at least forecast to through Friday. Thankfully, it is receding, as are so many of the other rivers in the Northeast. But now we're filling the rivers out in Southern California because we are seeing some serious rainfall. And we're talking about on the order of five to 10 inches in some spots. And that could be include Santa Barbara because you'll have this kind of just torrential rain overnight tonight through early tomorrow morning. And then mudslides, landslides, you could see a lot of impact even a ripple effect on travel from this very storm that has an elevated flood risk not something you see often in coastal california that thing in part will come with some other energy move across the nation and then it leaves us with the christmas outlook so yes we're still pretty far out but you'll clear out and dry out southern california and arizona and then you'll have that rain much above average in the middle of the country too we're talking about some of the warmest numbers we've seen perhaps on record in the Northern Plains. We'll get into all of that by the time we reach Monday, but the, the short answer, David, is no. Unless you get some elevation in the Rockies, a lot of us won't have a white Christmas. Yes, doesn't look like that, at least for now. Ginger Z will be watching you first thing in the morning on GMA. Thank you, Ginger. We turn now to the other major news this Wednesday night, the high-stakes prisoner swap between the U.S. tonight and Venezuela. Ten Americans now coming home, including six considered wrongfully detained. But one man also now on his way back wanted by the U.S. Here's our chief White House correspondent, Mary Bruce, tonight. After months of secret, painstaking negotiations, tonight 10 Americans jailed in Venezuela are home. Six of them deemed wrongfully detained, including 38-year-old Savoy Wright, a California businessman arrested in October and held for ransom. And Avon Hernandez, a Los Angeles public defender who was taken into custody last year near the border, accused of being a spy. Venezuela is also sending back a fugitive criminal mastermind American law enforcement authorities have been trying to bring back since he escaped the U.S. last year. Defense contractor Leonard Glenn Francis, also known as Fat Leonard. The man behind a $35 million bribery scheme, the largest corruption scandal in U.S. military history. In 2015, he pleaded guilty to using prostitutes, luxury travel, and cash to bribe U.S. naval officers to steer lucrative contracts to his companies, a scheme he described in an interview for an investigative podcast produced by Project Brazen in 2021. Everybody was in my pocket. I had them in my palm. I was just rolling them around. <laughs> Just three weeks before his sentencing last year, Francis, under house arrest, staged a stunning escape, cutting off his ankle monitor. After weeks on the run, he was finally captured in Venezuela. In exchange for Francis and the 10 Americans, the U.S. is granting clemency to Alex Saab, a top ally of Venezuela's authoritarian president, Nicolas Maduro. Saab was arrested in 2020 for money laundering. Today, the two men back together at the presidential palace. Now, this all comes as the Biden administration is trying to improve relations with Venezuela, the U.S. easing sanctions back in October after Maduro agreed to take steps toward free and fair elections. Tonight, President Biden saying they're making some progress. David. Mary Bruce at the White House. Mary, thank you. Tonight, the horrific images just in here, the newly released police video of the deadly shooting at UNLV when that professor who was turned down for a job then opened fire. Tonight, here are the images, what those students lived through and what authorities faced when they arrived on scene. And it's difficult. Here's ABC's Mola Lenghi now. Tonight, police in Las Vegas releasing heart-pounding body camera footage showing officers racing to the campus of UNLV as that professor, who was turned down from a job, opened fire. Open door to my right, open door to my left! Police trying to figure out if there was another gunman and where shots were coming from. They said they heard shots inside, so I don't know where that team is. A swarm of officers rushing into the building with guns drawn and alarms blaring as they move room to room, trying to kick down doors, finding students huddling together, then rushing them to safety. This woman in a wheelchair carried down a staircase. Chilling video captured the final shootout as the gunman in a long coat 
chased an officer around a patrol car before he was shot dead by police. We got one down in front of the hall. Do we have another one in the, inside the building still? The suspect, Anthony Polito, had a target list, but police believe when he didn't find his targets, he killed three professors and critically wounded a fourth who just happened to be in the building. Well, that fourth faculty member injured in the shooting remains in the hospital. Now, police say they are reviewing even more videos from that day and that those videos will be released as they become available. David Mola Lenghi with us tonight. Thank you, Mola. We turned out of the race for the White House tonight, 24 hours after Colorado's Supreme Court said Donald Trump should not be on the ballot in that state. They believe because of his actions on January 6th. Tonight, what Donald Trump now plans to do next. Here's Rachel Scott. Tonight, President Biden weighing in on that unprecedented decision by the Colorado Supreme Court that Donald Trump is disqualified from holding the office of president, removing him from the state's primary ballot, arguing he incited an insurrection. Is Trump an insurrectionist, sir? Well, I think it's certainly so, so self-evident. You saw it all. Now, whether the 14th Amendment applies, I'll let the court make that decision. But he certainly supported an insurrection. There's no question about it. None. Zero. The justice is citing the 14th Amendment, which bars anyone who had served in the federal government and then engaged in insurrection or rebellion from holding office. The ruling pointing to Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election, including exhorting his supporters to march to the Capitol to prevent what he falsely characterized as an alleged fraud. Tonight, Trump's Republican rivals all condemning the court's decision. We don't need to have judges making these decisions. We need voters to have make these decisions. Even former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, who has been Trump's toughest Republican critic, saying voters, not the courts, should decide. I do not believe Donald Trump should be prevented from being president of the United States by any court. I think he should be prevented from being president of the United States by the voters of this country. Tonight, the Trump campaign is vowing to fight that ruling with an appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. We're told that could happen as soon as next week. David. Covering it all for us, Rachel Scott again tonight. Rachel, thank you. We turn now to the war between Israel and Hamas and the grim new toll in Gaza. The Gaza Health Ministry, run by Hamas, reporting now that 20,000 people have now died in Gaza. Tonight, the White House says there are very serious negotiations now underway for a new ceasefire to get more hostages freed and more help in. But tonight, here are the images, the civilians and the journalists very close to an incoming strike in Gaza. ABC's Britt Clinton from the region again tonight. Tonight. Oh, my God. Did you hear that? Yes, yes, we did. Oh, my God. The moment civilians and journalists are caught in the middle of an Israeli airstrike. The Gaza death toll now crossing the horrific milestone of 20,000, according to the Hamas-run health ministry. The White House tonight saying very serious negotiations are underway for a new ceasefire to get more aid in and hostages out. We're pushing it. We, I, I don't, we, there's no expectation at this point, but we are pushing. Top Hamas leader Isma Haniya arriving in Egypt for indirect talks with Israel, mediated by the U.S. and Qatar. Arwa Naif fled to Rafa with her husband, their two young boys and pets in tow. Their fourth move since war erupted. Arwa telling me her children are her heroes for surviving under these circumstances. No child should have to go through this. Exactly. Especially if they don't understand. Even though you have nothing, completely nothing to do with all this fight, you can still be one of the death tolls or the injured or the casualties. No matter what's the number, we are just collateral damage. David, a Hamas official says they will not accept any hostage deal until Israel ends its aggression in Gaza. Prime Minister Netanyahu vowing to keep fighting until Hamas is eliminated, telling all terrorists surrender or die. David. All right, Britt Clenet in Israel for us again tonight. Britt, thank you. Back here in the U.S. tonight and to a very difficult loss in the ABC News family to report tonight. A news helicopter going down, taking the lives of the two-person crew at our Philadelphia station, WPVI. Chopper 6 was returning from an assignment in Burlington County, New Jersey, when it went down in a remote spot in Wharton State Forest. Another station's chopper capturing video of the scattered debris, pieces of the aircraft on fire. Tonight, the names of these longtime news veterans, Pilot Monroe Smith and photographer Christopher Doherty. They were part of WPVI's action news team for years. The NTSB is investigating. Of course, our thoughts are with their families and loved ones. And of course, we're thinking of our WPVI family tonight as well. When we come back here on the broadcast here in New York City, the five alarm fire, multiple injuries being reported at this hour. The cruise ship holiday vacation, they paid to go to the Bahamas. So how did passengers end up in Boston and Canada instead? 
And our Made in America Christmas tonight, it'll take you right back to your childhood. Here in New York City tonight, a major five alarm fire in Queens, forcing more than 450 people from their homes just before Christmas. The fire breaking out in a large six story apartment building in Sunnyside. Heavy damage reported, more than 130 firefighters responding. At least 14 people were hurt, including a firefighter in serious condition tonight. The Red Cross now helping residents find shelter. When we come back here, the cruise ship vacation to the Bahamas. Why did passengers end up in Boston and then Canada instead? That's what they want to know. And our Made in America Christmas tonight is sort of why didn't I think of that? To the index in tonight, cruise ship passengers out of New York angry over a last minute change. They paid to sail to the Bahamas, but they were rerouted to Boston in Canada. The MSC Meraviglia leaving from Brooklyn, severe weather forcing the ship to change its destination. Instead of the Bahamas, Boston in Canada. The company says passengers had the option to cancel at the last minute and receive future credit. They blamed the weather. When we come back here tonight, our Made in America Christmas, and here's a hint for you. We're just keeping it cool tonight. Literally. Finally tonight, we asked you delivered so many gift ideas made in America. Tonight, we take you to Texas, where they're keeping it cool this Christmas. Tonight, our great made in America Christmas, our 12th year, from Christmas tree farmers. It's a noble fur. Wow, that's nice. To the families from all over the country visiting the famous windows on Fifth Avenue. <laughs> I'm David Muir. I, I know who you are. You I do. Watch you every night. From Kannapolis, North Carolina to Worthington, Minnesota, from Chandler, Arizona to Martinsburg, Missouri, we've been everywhere this year. Hey, David. Happy holidays, David. And tonight, we take you to Katy, Texas, right outside Houston, where it might not be a white Christmas, but they still want to keep things cold. The famous igloo coolers since 1947, even the front gate in the shape of their iconic cooler. We went to meet the American workers in that factory. So this product goes out all over the U.S. and the world? Yes. 1,200 workers making more than 55,000 coolers a day, more than 16 million coolers a year. Mike Mihalik, VP of Operations. How important is this label right here, Made in USA? For us, it's everything. The coolers that are made in America How you doing? include their Laguna 48 for Walmart. This is somebody's brand new cooler. They don't even know it's theirs yet. That's, that's correct. In fact, it could be wrapped in under the tree by now. Also, the Latitude 62 with wheels sold at Target and Costco for Zelda on the line for two years. Great work. Angela on the line for 19 years with their Max Cold 150. Anyone who owns a cooler knows the drain plug is really important. This machine here is punching the hole in, and she's putting the plug actually in the cooler here. And ties Martinez with their newest coolers, helping the environment. This is looking forward, isn't it? It is. It is an amazing. Look at your smile. You're proud of this. I, I love this. Their Eco Cool collection, made from recycled plastic. Does it keep your beers and your water just as cold? You're going to try it? All right, let's try it. There you go. It was like you knew the question was coming. Right. Water for now, perhaps the beer after the show. Cheers. Cheers. You'll make the next cooler out of this. Less of this, more of that. Okay. Like that. From Texas to Mountain, Pennsylvania tonight, northwest of Philadelphia. The new chapter for a company you learned about right here last Christmas. Buck Mason. Hey. hey. How are you? Good How to you see doing? you. Good to see you. Looking for a little Made in America. Co-owners Eric Allen Ford and Sasha Cohn proud of their Made in America line, including T-shirts. You know, I really never wear black. <laughs> like for, for every shoot, everywhere. Some of their staples, the black, the gray, the blue. The most important thing. Right there on the label, Made in America. One year later. Hi, David. They've now opened eight new stores, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Colorado, Ohio, Texas, California, and New York. And listen to this. They bought this 150-year-old sewing factory and cloth mill in Mountain, Pennsylvania, and they brought it back to life. When we found out that the Moton Knitting Mills was closing, what we saw was an opportunity to rebuild. There's just such a great feeling knowing that we've kept jobs here. Rehiring 15 workers who lost their jobs when it closed. Alwira Piclo back in the factory. I'm proud to work here. Welcome back. Albert Barica, back to. Oh, I feel good, well, especially when I see somebody wearing something I made. 27 workers in all, making 30,000 Made in America t-shirts a month. Made in America! <laughs> While back in Katy, Texas tonight, Anquinette Lewis, once the janitor here, is now a manager running their e-commerce. Just listen to how many promotions. How long were you the janitor? Uh, maybe for like nine months. Nine months, and then? I went to e-commerce picker packer, then I went to a corporate mail clerk, and I went to a lead of e-commerce, and now I'm a manager. We're running a place. <laughs> <laughs>
She helps get those e-commerce orders there in time. You're the one who makes it happen. I do. I make it happen at least in two days. I try my best. Two days. Did you hear that? Two days. I tried. <laughs> All of it with these three words in mind. Man. Who doesn't love an igloo cooler? And I loved all of her promotions. We love Made in America. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.